So if you're going to be inspecting code, and certainly if you're going to be reviewing, testing, or making changes to code, you almost certainly be using a protocol called Git. And Git is a free and open source distributed version control system designed to handle everything from small to very large projects with speed and efficiency. Now, Git is a protocol. So in the same way as Bitcoin has a, a protocol that all four nodes need to follow, um, in the same way, there is an ecosystem that is built up around the Git protocol. So companies like GitHub, GitLab, um, Bitbucket by Atlassian, I'll go through some of those options later. But because there is a protocol um, that has provided a solution to a problem that everyone needed, um, that has created an industry in the same way as the Bitcoin protocol has created an industry, wallets, exchanges, hardware signs, etc. The Git protocol has created an industry and um, other open source projects like Linux have also created an industry and ecosystem um, around an open source uh, code base. So to install Git, um, you sh if you're on a Mac, it should be installed by default. You can do the command git version and it will tell you which git version you have installed. If it's not installed for some reason or you're on a different operating system, you can download it from Mac there. There's a Windows build. Now it does say git is easy to learn um, and that is true for the, the basic commands, like doing, doing things um, that you'll want to do every day, pulling code down, setting up your own branch, um, making changes to that branch, and then pushing those changes to a repository, things like this. Um, the basic commands, I would agree, are quite easy to learn. I'll do a different video on basic Git. Um, once you've learned the basic functionality of Git, the Bible for doing more advanced stuff um, is ProGit, this, this book here, um, free to download and really should be able to help you um, become closer to an expert or a ninja on Git past just basic Git functionality. So bear that resource in mind. You can see some of the companies and projects that use Git. Git is just totally dominated as the open source version control system of choice. Um, there are a few other ways to install Git on Windows, on Linux, etc. Now, the history of Git. So in 1991, Linus Torvalds started working on Linux, the open source operating system that has gone on to completely dominate um, backend servers, you know, infrastructure servers, has well over 90% dominance last time I checked. Now, whilst working on Linux, um, just like any other software project with an increasing number of contributors, the problem that they stumbled upon was this version control problem, right? Um, how can you have so many people all working on the same project, needing to agree on what the latest state of the code base is, not wanting to put um, barriers or bottlenecks to prevent people from working on their own changes um, whilst other people are working on different changes. And in the early days of Linux, um, they just emailed changes between each other, email patches between each other, and then Linus decided which changes should be merged into uh, the Linux code and in what order um, those, those changes should be merged in. Now, later on, they... Uh, Linus and Linux contributors um, heard about BitKeeper, which was a much more uh, sophisticated 
distributed open source, but uh, sorry, it wasn't open source, but distributed version control system. Um, so they started using BitKeeper, um, but it wasn't open source. Okay. Um, and this provides a problem if you can't see the code uh, that's running, you can't make changes to it. Um, you can't you can't tailor it for your your own usage. You just have to use it um, as it's as it's given to you. Um, so this frustrated the contributors to Linux, and um, one of them started trying to re reverse engineer the BitKeeper protocol, which apparently was against the usage rules for BitKeeper. Um, but ultimately, that frustration led them to create their own uh, open source version control system, which they named Git. And Git was, so this was when was this in terms of timing? This was 2005, um, the relationship between the Linux kernel and the commercial company that developed the Keeper Breakdown. Um, so in 2005, that's when uh, Linus and others decided that they really needed their own open source version control system, and that's when Git was born. Now, 2005, we're now in 2023, and yeah, Git continues to dominate. Linus is actually asked in this interview, uh, do you think Git lasts forever? Or do you see a, do you foresee another version control system in another 10 years? He says he's not going to be writing it, um, but if there is a replacement to Git, it will be pretty Git-like. Um, but what we're in 2023, Git continues to dominate as the version control system of choice, um, which is an incredible achievement, just like just like Linux is. And um, yeah, Git was just an offshoot of the Linux project. Um, when they stumbled upon upon a problem, they created this open source solution to it, and um, because they were very uh, able developers, they created some great open source software that, that continues to be used and dominate today. Um, one of the key concepts of Git is this, is this branching system, right? Um, you don't have to get permission to start working on changes to the code base. All you do is create your local branch to that code base. You work on that branch to your heart's content. And then once your work is done, you try to get the changes you've been working on on your local branch merged into the master branch. Um, in the in the Linux case, you'd need to be getting Linus's um, uh, effective permission to, to merge your change into the master branch of Linux. Um, so yeah, that's that's the key concept behind um, Git. And if you want to learn more about uh, Linus's views on Git and some of the history on Git, there's this talk from 16 years ago that uh, Linus did at Google. So that's worth a watch if you're interested in learning more about the evolution of Git. So the ecosystem. Uh, the most well-known company in sight is GitHub. I think uh, if you, what's like, especially when you're starting off, um, like GitHub is the place where most developers are and most open source projects are today in 2023. Um, now, Linus did have some views on GitHub Back in 2015, he says an excellent hosting service, right? So Git as a protocol doesn't obviously doesn't offer you hosting. You need to have your code stored or hosted somewhere. And so that's obviously the first service that a company can provide around the Git protocol. You need to have hosting. Um, and like I said, GitHub is an excellent hosting service. 
the complaints he's had about GitHub are as a development platform and the web interface actively encouraging bad behavior. Some of that may have changed uh, since since um, 2015, um, but yeah, there are obviously going to be differing views on, um, on, 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 on the user interface of GitHub. Um, so if GitHub is the place in 2023, I'd recommend you start, set up an account, um, and it's certainly where most of the open source projects are hosted. Um, now the niche that GitLab seems to have gone after, um, so that it isn't just a replica of GitHub, is the enterprise space. Um, it does have some open source projects hosted on GitLab, but um, I think to differentiate itself from GitHub, it's gone after the enterprise space. So, and one way of um, effectively doing this is to offer lots of options, um, some created by GitLab, but others created by third parties, integrations uh, that you'll need for things like continuous integration and um, issue tracking and things like this. Continuous integration is just running the tests continuously. Um, so if there is a, if a bug is introduced to the project because you're running these, these tests and you're building the project on a regular basis uh, through this continuous integration um, software, then it should identify bugs much quicker than if you're just relying on contributors to report bugs that have been introduced to the project. Security is a big, um, is an important um, that third party integration type product. And you can see all the third party integrations that you can get through security. So, I mean, there's just, there's just tons of stuff um, that you can use like as an enterprise, as you've got a massive code base with lots of different departments and lots of different repositories. And um, it's not just like an individual hobbyist, like learning how to code. It's, it's, big corporations that really can't afford any any mistakes or um, anything going wrong and I don't know, losing users' data or in a financial sense, in a worst case scenario, losing customers' money. Um, so that's GitLab. Um, yeah, GitHub does have integrations and there are some enterprises on, on GitHub so yeah, it's a bit it's a bit grey, but um, I, I certainly think GitHub shifted in towards the individual like open source community and and, and GitLab's uh, going after enterprise. Um, yeah, some more extensions for GitHub. Another competitor is Bitbucket from Atlassian. Atlassian has its own like software ecosystem. Uh, of which Bitbucket is the GitHub or GitLab equivalent. Um, but yeah, offers tons of different products to help you collaborate um, and ultimately, um, ultimately ship the best code that you can do as a project or as a company. Okay, so that's, that's, that's the ecosystem that's built up around Git. There are other companies, but I think those are the three main ones that I'm aware of. So I've got up here the Bitcoin core code base, and we will just um, you do some basic um, Git functionality um, with the Bitcoin core code base. So to get a clone of the Bitcoin core code base on your local machine. You can either use HTTPS or SSH. It's generally recommended to use SSH, but it does require setting up some keys. Um, 
on your local machine. So we'll clone using HTTPS. Um, in this case, we're just going to clone the, the the code of Bitcoin Core, right? So there's this whole project that's currently hosted on GitHub. So we'll go to the terminal. We'll do print working directory. We'll see where we are. We're in uh, this to be deleted directory that I've set up before, and we're going to clone the Bitcoin Core codebase. So git git clone. We're going to copy this HTTPS link and we're going to paste it next to git clone and then press enter. So we are cloning the Bitcoin core code onto our machine. And that should take a few seconds. While we wait, um, we can also um, clone or, or pull down the code from someone else's branch of Bitcoin Core. So, I mean, if we go to the pull requests, uh, here are all the open pull requests. We'll pick a random pull request. Um, so this is a pull request uh, a contributor called the stack has opened. And if we want to look at the code of this pull request, we can clone the branch or the, the and the fork that the stack has made of the Bitcoin Core code base. Um, we can clone and pull that code down too. Um, we'll just go back. So we have successfully cloned the Bitcoin Core code base. We can do git branch and see what branch we're on. Um, no, we can't because we need to go. If we do list, we can see that's the directory in which we've cloned the Bitcoin Core replay. So if we go into that directory um, and then we do git branch, we can see that we're on the master branch of the Bitcoin Core code base. And yes, we're on master. We can also look at the file system. Um, so if we do ls uh, list, uh, we can see that all of the files at the Bitcoin Core code base has um, here are now on our local machine. So yeah, share source test. Let's share source test for directories. So we have cloned the code Bitcoin Core onto our local machine. Now let's go back to what I was doing previously. If we go to the pull requests and we go to a random pull request that was opened by the stack, we can go to the branch that the stack was working on to open this pull request. And the stack's branch is on a fork of the Bitcoin Core code base. So to look at the code that um, he's been working on, we can clone his fork of the Bitcoin Core repo. Um, now, because let's go up a level, change directory dot dot, print working directory list. Okay, so that's where we have in Bitcoin, that's where we have the clone of Bitcoin Core itself. Let's clone the stacks fork of Bitcoin Core um, in a different directory. So if we do git clone um, and we'll paste that link that we've copied from the stacks fork of Bitcoin Core, but we do need to give this directory that we're going to be cloning into a name other than Bitcoin, otherwise it will clash with the the Bitcoin directory you already have. So let's just say uh, yeah, the stack fork. And then we can clone the stacks fork of Bitcoin Core into this directory. So we'll do that. That'll take a few seconds. So yeah, that is cloning the whole fork. Now, 
for this particular pull request, we're just interested in this particular branch that the stack's been working on. So we can click on there, and then if we're just interested in this particular branch, we can copy the branch name and go back to the terminal. So we've, it's now successfully cloned um, the Stacks fork of Bitcoin core from DLS. We can now see not only um, the code version from Bitcoin core, we can now see um, the Stacks fork directory. We'll go into that directory. Fork, so change directory into the stack fork, and if we do ls, we'll be able to see the same uh, initial files and directories that we could see when we did when we ls into the Bitcoin core repo. Yep. Um, but this is where we don't want we want to look specifically at the branch that the stack's been working on. So we've copied that branch name. Um, and we can check out this branch um, that the stack's been working on, git checkout, branch name, enter. And now if we do git branch, we'll be able to see not only the master branch of the stack's fork, but also this branch off of master that the stack's been working on to open this pull request. So if we do git branch, we can see um, that we're now on the branch um, that's relevant to this pull request and we've moved off from master. So that's an introduction to cloning a repository to going into a contributor's uh, fork of Bitcoin Core and cloning their fork and then uh, going on to the particular branch that that contributor has been working on um, to open a pull request to the main Bitcoin Core repository. So yeah, that's a brief history of Git, the protocol, and, and using Git to clone or pull down the code um, from relevant repositories before we start reviewing 